in the wake of the 2020 elections, Donald Trump told a lie, a big lie, that the election was stolen from him by voter fraud. There was no evidence for this. His own administration concluded that the 2020 election was one of the safest in his history. His lawyers were laughed out of courts, many by Republican judges, some by judges he appointed, Trump appointed. But he kept saying it anyway. He lied over and over and over again. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again, poisoning our democracy, lighting a fire beneath Republican state legislatures who immediately launched the most sweeping voter suppression effort in at least 80 years. Just a note, how despicable a man is Donald Trump. He lost an election legitimately. He can't face that, that it was his failure. And he creates a lie, a big lie, and wins so many people over to that lie with the help of news media and other news commentators who are lying as well, and they know it. Again, Donald Trump, with his despicable lies, has lit a fire beneath Republican state legislatures, and they have launched the most sweeping voter suppression efforts in at least, in at least 80 years. More than 250 bills in 43 states were introduced just between the months of January and February that would restrict the right to vote. Do you want to know how many were introduced during a similar period of time last year? The year before Donald Trump was telling a big lie, 35. 35 in 2020, more than 250 in 2021. Today, in June, there have been nearly 400 bills introduced. The only thing that changed between 2020 and 2021 was Donald Trump's big lie about massive fraud. And now, in states like Georgia and Iowa and Florida and Montana, these proposals are becoming law under the vicious guise of election integrity. The words election integrity aren't a guise. There's nothing vicious about them. The way Republican legislatures are using those words is vicious and a guise, a falsity, a fakeness. I want my Republican colleagues, maybe we can awaken their conscience, maybe, on something as sacred as voting rights. I want my Republican colleagues to listen to some of the policies that have been proposed by Republican state legislatures and tell me how they're about election integrity, how, about, how they're about suppressing fraud, reducing polling hours in polling places. How is that about election integrity? How does that reduce voter fraud? Mandating that every precinct, no matter how large or small, have the same number of ballot drop boxes, a county of a million and a county of a thousand, the same number. How does that reduce fraud? What does that have to do with election integrity? No after hours voting, 24 hour voting. No after hours voting, no 24 hour voting, no drive through voting. What does that have to do with election fraud? It certainly has to do with reducing people's right to vote and ability to vote, but nothing, nothing to do with election fraud. My Republican colleagues, how does making it a crime to give food or water to voters waiting in long lines at the polls deter voter fraud, which really we have found no evidence exists to begin with, very little evidence. And by the way, in so many states, if you're African American, if you're inner city, if you're poor, if you're brown, you have to wait a lot longer than if you're white and in a suburb. But don't give them water. Don't allow them to have a drink as they're waiting in the hot sun on lines to vote. Yeah, what does that have to do with voter fraud? It has to do with cruelty. It has to do with nastiness. And it has to do with suppressing the vote. 